Tracy Allen. Okay, everybody looking at me. Where do you go? Everybody say thank you, Darren. Where is Darren? One more. Drop something and create a work. Broke a piece of Philippine mahogany. It started off to be a piece of wood like that. I put between two wood lockers. And I kept pounding on it until finally it broke. You know, and a month would go by and I take that half piece and I put it between the foot lockers and I start to try to break that. Fists, whatever, fingertips. And, you know, I just went on and on. And, my, and Tommy Osi, I kept complaining that my hands were all bruised up. And, he said, I don't know what you're doing, George. He says, but you know, something's wrong here. You're, you're, you shouldn't be looking like that. The kind of training that I'm doing or, or giving you, uh, you shouldn't be suffering from all of these ailments. And then I, you know, I, I said, well, you know, I, am, I have a little project on my own. And I want to break this Philippine mahogany down until it's like six inches wide. And he laughed and said, you know, you, you, you're going to pay a price for this. Maybe not tomorrow. But he said, I can tell by looking at your knuckles, looking at your hands, that this is not something that you're going to want to remember. But when you, when you do suffer the consequence, remember what I told you. So it took about 30 years. I know it seems like a long time to you, until you get to be 50, and all of a sudden you say, where did the time go? So the things that, that I, I talk about in terms of poor wagey are things that I want you to sort of keep in mind. First off, your body will tell you if you're doing something wrong. If you don't listen to your body, and you listen, perhaps you're a football player, and you're listening to the coach, and he's saying, you gotta play through the pain. No pain, no gain. What's he really telling you? Well, I want you to win that trophy for me and the school and all that. And hey, I don't need you next year because you're graduating or whatever. So whatever happens to you, let the next, you know, next to your wife or your, your spouse worry about you. Right? That's not what you should be listening to. If your teacher is telling you, you know, you got to break boards and all that with your toes and all that, you got to say respectfully, I don't do that. I don't, I, you know, there's no board that has ever attacked me. There's no concrete block that's ever attacked me. And, you know, I'll let it live in peace, and I'll live in peace also. I, most teachers will say, okay, that's, that's up to you. Now, what are the things you look for when you train? In San Chin, the wheels of a car first off are parallel. If the wheels are off canter, what happens to the tires? They wear up. So if you walk like this, now ballet dancers walk a little bit like that, and I think that's part of the, the, their ballet routines. But even just walking in everyday life, if you do things that are off balance, this is gonna wear down joints, all right? When you perform San Chen, if this foot is turned out too much, you should feel pain in your knee and your hip, all right? Never push your heel out more than the width of your heel, all right? Now these are, this is laws of Wei Chi Ru. And I see, I see some people doing this, you know, they're doing their San Chen. Now how can you ever move? How can you feel comfortable when your heel is out that far, all right? You must feel very mobile in this position. If you're fighting or anything else, San Shin should teach you always to be on balance. And if you stop at any point, where are you? You're in a relatively good San Shin position. Right? Your knee should never go out of alignment with your foot. All right? 
If your foot is out, heel is out like there, and your foot is in this direction, your knee naturally is going to go in the direction of the toes. Right? But that's not the direction you want it to go in because it's going to put a tremendous strain on your hips. All right. So put your, you get your sanch in, put your heel out just the width of your heel. Just the width of your heel. Now I know a lot of you think your heel is that wide, but it's not. All right, it's probably about that wide. Back foot is straight. Why? Because Weitziru is a fighting system, frontal fighting system. A lot of your action takes place with your shoulders and hip in line with whatever action you're performing. All right? So the rear leg is straight. If the foot is turned out like that, your hips are going to want to go this direction. However, if your foot is this way and you, your teacher says, well, straighten out, if you go like that, then what happens to the hip? Obviously, there's going to be a lot of stress here. And this is something that will wear down the joint over a period of time. It's not going to happen in a week. And after a while, you'll feel comfortable in that position. But it's moving your leg in a manner that it shouldn't move. It wasn't designed to move that way. So when you're in a correct sanchin position, it should feel real good. The knee is in line with the toes. Toes. So what happens, you're sort of getting a, a, a wedge kind of effect with your San Chen. Right? Then you tuck your pelvis under. And you do that by bending the knees slightly. Right? Now how far do you bend your knees? I see some people doing San Chen like that. Obviously that's not going to be too good on your knees either. The angle of your arm tells you something. We try to maintain this angle at all times. Whether you're doing a block, or whether you're doing a hook punch, or whatever, if you always take that elbow without straightening or pulling your arm in, and you bring it back to San Chen, you can find out it will be in this position. Right? So this angle we use because it's the strongest angle that your arm can be in. If you extend it out like that, it's weak. Inward, it's weak. Right here, it's very strong. So that should tell you something. If you're doing the circle block, and you bend this arm in or out while you're doing the block, for instance, if you come down here like that, it's straight. All right? If you pull in here, all of a sudden now, if you have action, something you want to move, you're going to try to move. So this is going to be weak. It puts a tremendous strain on your shoulder. All right, just come forward. Move your arm up. All right, now, someone's punching at me, and I move. Now watch how I move. Notice that? My San Chin does not change at all, all the way through this block. And therefore, I am moving his arm much better than if I try to keep my shoulder stable and I move like this. All of a sudden, this is a very acute angle here. And if I reach any oppos opposition here, I cannot use the power of San Chen to move that arm. All right? So what happens, you see people doing this. How many of you do an arm pounding in it? Like that. All right? Whereas, if we're just a little bit of an action, you come around like this, See how my body is moving here? <coughs> like that. All right? I'm hitting, I'm moving, I'm intercepting with my body, my body armor, not just an arm. I'm trying to pull, pull it away. All right? Thank you. Angle of my arm is the same as angle of my legs. All right? So you want to find the best angle to support your upper body. Now whatever, that's going to be different for everyone. Your body is different than your, your partner right next to you. When you step, you straighten the feet. And remember the analogy or the image of the car with the wheels? When you move, 
your feet move parallel. Can we get out here and then the heel goes out the width of the heel and heel down. All right. 